Hello, viewers. Let's talk about ABV. So I've brewed a lot of rice wine on this channel, almost a hundred recipes, a hundred videos showing me brewing rice wine at home in my kitchen. And the most common question that I get is, how much alcohol is in your makhli, in your rice wine? How much, uh, what's the ABV, the alcohol by volume of, of the rice wine that you've, uh, the recipe that you've shown? And that's something that I've never been able to answer. I always just tell people, oh, you should taste it and just estimate it on the taste. Um, but today, I'm going to try to actually answer that question. How much alcohol is in the rice wine that I brew? This channel is dedicated to rustic Asian rice wine. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe, and please click the bell to be notified of any updates. I have a new video every Thursday about rustic Asian rice wine, and uh, please share this video wherever it is appropriate. So let's get into today's topic, measuring the alcohol content of my rice wine. So today's episode is not particularly rustic. I'm going to try to be careful to explain my assumptions and my reasoning as I try to measure the alcohol content of my rice wine. But these are not rustic methods. They're using you know, modern, modern equipment. So, uh, so. Ah. <laughs> ha. First thing I want to say off the bat is, yeah, this is not a rustic episode. This is a technical episode. Here's the problem. The typical methods used to measure alcohol content for beer or wine, uh, those methods don't work for rice wine. So for, for beer or wine, the typical way to measure alcohol content for, for home brewing is to measure a specific gravity, that's density, measure that uh, before and after fermentation. Now the big difference is that for beer or wine, uh, before fermentation starts, all the sugars are available. Um, and for, for rice wine, because it's simultaneous saccharification and fermentation, that's the brewing process, uh, you don't have any sugars at the start of brewing rice wine, and the sugars and the fermentation are occurring at the same time. So you, you do not have that point in time where you can measure the density with all the sugars present. Another big problem is that for rice wine, the... Uh, Often there's so much rice in the in the beginning of the brew. It's not it's not a liquid. There's too much too much solids in there. You you can't get a, the measurement that you want. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. For wine, you start off with a certain amount of fruit sugars and water, and uh, you measure the initial gravity. You do the fermentation some of the sugars turn into alcohol during that process, and then you measure the final gravity. And then for beer, the process is you have some grain and water, that's the mash, uh, you, you turn the grain into sugar, then you measure the initial gravity, do the fermentation, some of the sugar changes into alcohol, and uh, you measure the final gravity. So visually, that's what's happening for wine and beer. But for rice wine, you start off with rice and water. That's just starch and water. There's 0% sugar at the start. There's simultaneous saccharification that turns the rice into sugar. And there's fermentation that's changing the sugar to alcohol at the same time. So you end up with some sugar, some alcohol, and water at the end. Let's talk about the assumptions for measuring alcohol in beer and wine. You're assuming that uh, the solution you start with 
it is uh, sugar and water, and you're ignoring everything else, any other kind of substance that might be in the water. So a sugar solution is denser than plain water. That's why measuring density tells you how much sugar you have before fermentation begins. The next assumption is that after fermentation, you have a, a liquid containing water, alcohol, and sugar, and uh, you're ignoring anything else. And alcohol is lower density than water. So the more alcohol that's produced, the less dense the liquid will be. That's why if you measure the density after fermentation, then you can determine how much of the sugar was converted to alcohol. And that, that'll give you the ABV for, for wine or beer. The density measurements, the specific gravity measurements are, are enough to do that. So this is logical. It works. This is what home brewers use. Quick digression. ABV is not the same as alcohol volume fraction or alcohol volume percentage. So the definition of this is very specific. It means uh, if you have a 20% ABV, that's uh, mixing together 20 milliliters of alcohol with enough water to come up to exactly 100 milliliters. And that's going to be more than 80, slightly more than 80 milliliters of water that you need to add to the 20 milliliters of alcohol to get 100 milliliters of liquid in total. End of digression. The density of liquid can be measured with an instrument called a hydrometer. Like I mentioned, you'd, you need two measurements before and after fermentation with a hydrometer to determine the, the alcohol content of beer or wine. With rice wine, there's no opportunity to measure the initial specific gravity. For one thing, there's so much solid rice and so little liquid, the hydrometer wouldn't work. And for another, we can't tell how much sugar is produced during brewing since it happens at the same time as fermentation. I'm just restating the obstacle we have in using the beer or wine methods for rice wine. There should be some method that can measure the alcohol content of rice wine. And uh, I did find this explanation on homebrewsake.com. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it makes sense to me. It's logical and uh, it should work. So I'm going to try. There, it actually explains two different methods here on this page, one involving boiling and the second one involving a hydrometer and a refractometer. So that's what I'm going to try in today's episode is this second method described on this page on homebrewsake.com. An important thing to note here is that these methods, as described, will uh, will only work on a, on a liquid that contains water, sugar, alcohol, and a small amount of other dissolved substances. Um, but it won't work if there are solids mixed in. If, uh, if there are solids s suspended in the liquid, then, uh, then it's not going to work. So that rules out uh, being able to measure Mockley. So Mockley has a lot of solids suspended in it that will, that will uh, settle down to the bottom. These are solids, and they'll interfere with any, any measurements uh, we're doing, and they don't fit into this, this method at all. So we're not going to be able to measure Mockley. Now, on the other hand, it should work for any clear rice wine that doesn't have solids in it. And that would be something like Changju. So I have I have Changju. I want to measure the alcohol content of my Changju. So that's what I'm going to go forward with in today's episode. I'm trying to measure the ABV of my Changju. I want to introduce these two instruments to you. This is the hydrometer that I bought and the refractometer that I bought. Less than $20 each. Um, as usual, I, I will have links in the description if you want to see exactly the model that I bought. You know, I bought 
I bought the lowest end version that I thought would, would possibly work. These instruments have some advantages. They are simple. They're, there's a zero or one moving part in these, in these instruments. And uh, they're inexpensive. They're less than $20 each, at least the ones that I got. I do know that commercial versions of these instruments could be hundreds or even thousands of dollars, but uh, for home brewing, these are inexpensive instruments. Like I said, less than $20 each. And there are links in the description. As an Amazon associate, I earn on qualified purchases. So here's the hydrometer I bought, what came in the in the box, and uh, and it comes with a cleaning brush. It uh, requires about 120 milliliters of liquid to be able to float the hydrometer in the tube. And you float the hydrometer in the tube and get a measurement that way. And uh, the hydrometer measures density relative to water. And the range on this particular hydrometer looks to be 0.982 to 1.16. And the uh, precision is 0 0.002. Here's the instructions it came with. So here's the refractometer I bought and the instructions. We're using the BRICS scale on this refractometer and the range of that is from zero to 32 with a precision of 0 0.2. You can grab some liquid with those plastic things and uh, put it on the refractometer, look at it through the eyepiece, point it at some light and you can uh, read off the value. And here's the instructions for for the refractometer. And this is what it looks like when you're looking through the refractometer. When there's liquid in it, there'll be a, a dividing line between white area and a blue area. So let's calibrate these instruments. The first way I want to calibrate is with distilled water. So pour the distilled water into the tube I'm going to float the hydrometer in, in the water. I'm expecting to get a reading of 1.000. So they do say there's some things to watch out for. The temperature is one thing. I am around room temperature, so that's good. And no bubbles. It has to be floating freely. Okay, so I do get that reading of 1.000. Now I take some of that distilled water, put it on the refractometer, close it, give it 30 seconds or so to stabilize the temperature. What I see here is a reading of 0.6. So I need to adjust it. So as I'm looking through it, I adjust it so that instead of reading 0.6, it reads 0.0. .0. So for the refractometer, I want to calibrate with some salt water. That's an easy way to get a different uh, refraction index. Just have to convert that refractive index to the BRICS scale so I can use it. What I'm looking for is a 4.4 BRICS. And this uh, solution needs to be mixed up well. So I shake it well. So what I see here is uh, on the BRICS scale, I see 4.6. So I was expecting 4.4, .4, but I got 4.6. Maybe it's a little bit off. Maybe I didn't calibrate it exactly right, but uh, that's the value I see. But that's close anyhow. And now here's a bad example, carbonated water. What happens if you try to measure the density of a carbonated liquid? So try to float the uh, hydrometer in the carbonated water and uh, Okay, the bubbles force it up. The density of the carbonated water, yeah, it's sort of confusing, and it, it changes as I'm watching it. As the bubbles uh, bubble up, the reading changes. So um, 
no carbonated liquids. You, you need to, so you just can't use a hydrometer to measure the specific gravity of a carbonated liquid. It's going to be inconsistent and uh, you need to get all the gas out of your sample before you try to measure it. So the fourth thing I want to measure is vodka and water. And, uh, now that's because um, the vodka has a known ABV. So I measure uh, 60 milliliters of vodka, which is 40% ABV, and I add distilled water up to 120 milliliters, which I've marked on the on the tube here. So that is going to be 20% ABV. Can I use the method described on homebrewsake.com? Can I use that method to determine the ABV of this mixture? Now, I, I do need to make sure the water and vodka are mixed well together. So I just try moving the hydrometer up and down a bit to try to mix things. Now, since the alcohol is less dense than water, we should get a reading that's less than one. And actually, it's off the scale here. Um, well, it's something around 0 0.97. So I'll just go with that and uh, 0 0.97 and take a sample and put it in the refractometer. Give it 30 seconds to equalize temperature and then take a reading. The BRICS scale says 8.0. So let's plug those values into the uh, recommended formula, which is available on this, on this website. So 0 0.97 specific gravity, BRICS scale 8.0, that gives 23.5. And uh, let, let me adjust the values a little bit. What if I was off? So it changes a bit, but not uh, not extremely a lot. It still is off. Yeah. So even I even if I didn't read the values exactly right or my calibration was off, um, I'm still getting a number that's quite a bit more than twenty. I I know this this is not a good result because I expected ABV of twenty point zero, and I got twenty three point five. So that that error percentage is 17.5%. Uh, that's greater than any possible error due to precision. Mm, maybe just not enough mixing or might not just be, this uh, calculation might not be suitable for this particular liquid that wasn't derived by brewing. There's no, there was, wasn't any, there weren't any sugars in it. So maybe it's just not appropriate to use this formula in this extreme case. This calculator seems to give a, a volume percentage instead of ABV. Um, like I mentioned before, those are different, but at uh, at 20%, I think the difference is only 0.5%. So um, that doesn't explain the difference either. But the whole point of this was to measure some rice wine. I want to measure my Changju. So, so let's try it. This is uh, my batch 82A. Let's try to measure this Changju. So I pour in uh, 120 milliliters into the tube. Float the hydrometer. I'm getting a specific gravity of 1.020. Of course, it's important to clean the refractometer between uses. I've been doing that. And I'm going to take some of that and uh, place some of the Changju on the refractometer, close it up, give it 30 seconds, and take a reading. Looks to me like this is 19.4. 
plug that into the formula here and I get oh, 22.45. That's, um, that's too high. 22.45 is much too high. The yeast that I use, the alcohol tolerance is usually 13 to 15% or 18% at most. So th that value is just way too high. I know there could be some temperature adjustments, um, but those would only change my readings a small amount. And again, the difference is too large to be accounted for just from some small errors in uh, in my readings or adjustments due to temperature. Those are relatively small. They're not going to give um, more a value that's small enough. All these values are still more than 20. So I don't trust the ABV value calculated from my hydrometer and refractometer measurements. I went looking on some other websites. Here's a uh, here's a company that makes refractometers and hydrometers, Bellingham and Stanley. They give a similar description of the method uh, using using these two instruments, and uh, they have their own formula. So let's uh, try to plug in. Uh, what I found, let's see if there's a difference in the formula that they're using. Uh, I, I do have to convert my BRICS measurements into Zeiss units, which is what their formula uses. And uh, I still get an ABV at, of 20, more than 22. So that's, again, still too high. Uh, formula is slightly, slightly different. But, uh, um, yeah, too high. Now, one thing is, um, take a look at the description here. It says the process um, has an accuracy of about plus or minus 0.5% alcohol. Okay, so, um, and this, this company sells a refractometer for about $170. So, uh, you know, it's... It, could be more precise than the, the cheapest one that I bought, but uh, even with their instrument that they're selling, that's probably more accurate. Uh, they're saying that using this method, you can only get to within 0.5% in your alcohol measurement. So that's, a, that's an important limitation. Good to set uh, my expectations that even if I had good instruments and I totally knew what I was doing and I accounted for the temperature variation, even then I would still, I should still only expect an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5%. So I think that's, uh, that's very important. So I'm not sure what went wrong here. So my conclusion is that I still haven't been able to accurately measure the ABV of my rice wine. Uh, even though the instruments are simple, I'm able to adjust them and calibrate them reasonably, and uh, they're reasonably consistent. The formula is makes logical sense to me, but I'm not getting reasonable values out of it. So, um, like I, like I said, I don't think it's just a matter of my ability in reading the instrument or um, being uh, more careful about uh, noting the temperature at which I'm taking these measurements. Um, it's just it's just too far off. Could be something to do with uh, with mixing. Uh, if the alcohol and water aren't mixed together um, completely, then uh, they, there could be some variation depending if I'm taking a sample from the top of the uh, top of the tube or the bottom of the tube. That would be that would be a problem if there was a variation like that. Um, if yeah, but given the way I did it, it's just not accurate enough. I don't I don't trust this enough. You might as well just taste it. So this method didn't work the way I did it. I'm going to have to uh, review what I did, and if I can figure out what I did wrong, then you know I'll I'll redo this video 
with uh, with what I figure out. But uh, in the meantime, uh, next episode, what I'm going to do is the other method described in um, homebrew sake, the boiling method. I'm going to try that method to estimate the alcohol content of my rice wine. So stay tuned for that episode next time. And thank you for watching. Thank you.